had really bad news from a doctor, whether it's about you or someone that you love, it feels like the whole world crumbles around you in an instant. The news that changed my life was when a doctor said, Let's talk about this paralysis as I lay in a hospital bed, unable to feel or move my leg. When I was a little girl, around nine years old, I was leaning over the sink doing the dishes when I felt a deep, agonizing pain in my back. But no one else was talking about back pain, and I thought that meant they were dealing with theirs without complaining, so I did the same. Shortly after, my family and I moved to Singapore and I studied right here at United World College. I was in countless theatre productions and I even performed a terrible rap song that I wrote in music class on this very stage. But thankfully, there is no photographic evidence of that. I walked through these school halls knowing that ambition burned bright inside me, but it was buried under mountains of shame and chronic pain. I learned very quickly that people were not interested in hearing about pain. For the next 15 years, I was dismissed by doctors and healthcare professionals who told me there was nothing wrong. I learned to downplay my pain for fear that I would be labeled hysterical or psychosomatic, but deep down, I knew something was wrong. 15 years of researching and living in pain made me feel like I was broken. I had all these ideas about what might be causing my pain, but I didn't dare argue with doctors, because if I upset their ego, they might not help me. Nobody was listening, and I felt like I had no power to control the situation. I was desperately trying to live, and I just wanted to have a normal life but I realized that I had really started to hate myself because I felt like a failure. I didn't know how to act like someone who truly cared about themselves. I didn't know how to act like someone who loved themselves. The pain continued to worsen and I developed a whole host of other symptoms. When I was 24, I had surgery and was diagnosed with endometriosis. It's estimated that one in 10 women live with endometriosis, but it takes an average of eight years to get diagnosed. And the diagnosis was validating, but it didn't explain all the symptoms that were going on. It soon felt negligent of doctors to dump everything into one blanket diagnosis, but nobody listened. It felt like they couldn't wait to get me out of their office. My health rapidly declined after that first surgery. I desperately tried living a normal life, but my days had been reduced to working a stressful job and resting. Woken up by burning pain, it would take me at least 30 minutes to get dressed in the morning as I had to take breaks between each item of clothing. And even though the thought of leaving my bed seemed impossible, I would debate with myself every day about whether I was really sick enough to stay home. The thing about chronic illness is that you experience daily symptoms that would take the average person to the doctor, but it is simply not an option to cry and scream every day. People with chronic illness are not faking being sick. We are faking being well. I pushed and pushed because I didn't know how to fix the problem. I was that person who was sending work emails from the hospital emergency room. And then one day, I ran out of steam and called in sick to work. First for a week, then two, then indefinitely. When it finally dawned on me that I would not be going back to work for the foreseeable future, a relentless grief washed over me. I mourned the loss of my career that I had worked so hard to maintain and yet it wasn't enough. I mourned the loss of the fun, easy, adventurous life a 25-year-old should be living. Left with a million loose ends, life felt like it had suddenly stopped. 
I believe that the opposite of depression is not happiness, it is purpose. When you lack purpose, it's very difficult to pull yourself out of the situation that is keeping you unhappy. It is not your fault if you are stuck, sick or unhappy, but it is your responsibility to do something about it. If we are not changing, then we are choosing. Stuck at home for months on end, there was nothing to silence the thoughts that were running through my head. That I was lazy for staying in bed, that I was a terrible friend for canceling plans, and that maybe I deserve to be in pain. I never realized how mean I was being to myself. So I made myself a promise, and I wrote it down in my journal. Okay, Jenny, you have to start looking after yourself. You deserve it, and you're worth it. Every day, you will look in the mirror and say, Hello, beautiful. You are an incredible human being, and you deserve to be loved. Today, I will give you my love. Many doctors told me that my expectations for healing were unrealistic and that I had too much hope. One told me there was nothing else to try, I had to accept that I would be in severe pain, unable to work, travel, or socialize normally again. I was 26 years old. Medical decisions should be based on more than just life and death. When were, going to, when were they going to look at me like a real person who was fighting for a good quality of life? I had a vision for how my life would be, and this was not it. I wish I had realized sooner that I was the driver and everybody else was a passenger along for the ride. And the passengers do not get to decide where the car is going. The days for backseat driving were over. Nobody was listening to me and something had to change. So I fired the doctors who were not working in my best interest and sought out another opinion. They assured me that all my symptoms were caused by endometriosis and that they could help. So I was scheduled for another surgery. When I woke up, I couldn't feel my leg. At first, I thought it was an effect of the anesthesia, but I wasn't able to feel or move my leg for five days. Everybody acted like nothing was wrong. One doctor told me to just stop being lazy. But it wasn't until days later when another walked in and said, so let's talk about this paralysis, that the situation really sank in. They then finally ordered some tests to investigate and came to the conclusion that there was endometriosis growing on the pelvic nerves, a rare but very serious condition that can lead to permanent loss of leg function. The surgery needed was so dangerous that they refused to even try performing it and suggested I find a good psychologist to prepare for a life in a wheelchair. By this point, I was a week post-op, some leg function had returned, and I was discharged from the hospital. I cried the loudest, ugliest tears on the phone to my mom. I didn't care who saw, and I didn't care who heard. It felt like all the promise I had from this new medical team was suddenly gone, and I was completely alone again. Through my own research, I had heard of a surgeon in Switzerland who specialized in the kind of surgery I needed. He recommended immediate treatment if we were going to avoid permanent damage. But I had to wait, because my insurance would cover the costs. It was then that my mum, who lived on the other side of the world and couldn't travel to be with me, offered to take out the loan and pay for the surgery. I resisted big time. It was my insurance's job to pay and they owed me this, is what I kept telling myself. But the truth is that I had begged for a way to get to the surgery, and here my mum was giving it to me on a silver platter. It wasn't the money so much that I had trouble accepting, but the way in which it was given. 
This was a gift given to me by someone that loved me so much that all she wanted was for me to feel better. There were no strings attached. But before I could accept this gift, I had to accept that I was worthy of that kind of money and more importantly, of that kind of love. My mum is my biggest supporter and best friend. She sat through so many events at this school. She supported me through years of chronic illness. She paid for the surgery and she's sitting in the audience tonight cheering me on again. Thank you so much, Mum, for everything. have been on a blind date with someone that you met online. There's a lot that can go wrong, huh? Now imagine this. I travelled to Switzerland on my own in the middle of a pandemic to get a dangerous surgery by a man I had met once online on Zoom. When I woke up, my leg was numb again, but this time it was planned. It turned out not to be nerve endometriosis, but a massive vascular entrapment. Basically, a large vein was in the wrong place and it was sandwiching the pelvic nerves to the bone. This explained why I hadn't been able to sit, lie down, or stand without excruciating pain for years. Not much is known about vascular entrapment, but it's probably something I was born with. Finally, I had answers. Finally, I was validated, and finally, my body could heal. That surgery was in February 2021, and today, two years later, I am still recovering. There are still days that I have pain, areas that I can't feel, and times when my leg feels weak. But the majority of my days are now pain-free and filled with adventure. The life that I dreamed of on my couch for so many years is coming true. In the past few months, I have started my own company and traveled solo. I even started dancing again, but I promise I have not gone back to rapping. <laughs> the little girl that walked through these school halls had big, colorful dreams, but shame and pain turned those dreams to gray and she had to put those dreams on hold as she desperately tried to survive from one day to the next. But even on those darkest days, there was always a glimmer of hope. And now I can see that all those loose ends and different fragments of my old grey life have threaded themselves into the most beautiful kaleidoscope, and I get to live my life in colour every single day. The truth is that the bigger the dream, the bigger the number of people who will not understand it. To act on big dreams takes courage, and when people tell us our ideas are bad, we can use it as an excuse not to be brave. Be braver than the people who do not dare to dream. Be stronger than the voice in your head that is begging you to think small. If you can allow yourself the discomfort of being misunderstood, it will fast track the path to your dreams beyond imagination. And never lose sight of hope. Hope is everything, and it will be your guiding light when everyone around you can only see dark. There is no such thing as too much hope. The fact that I am standing here today is proof of two things. That big dreams can come true and that your body's ability to heal is greater than anyone has permitted you to believe. Alice Walker once wrote, people give up their power by thinking they are happening. There is so much power within each and every one of you and you get to choose how you use your voice and what you want it to stand for. Do not fear the next chapter of your life because you are the author. Think about the story that you're writing. Does it include your greatest dreams? What are you going to do with your power? 
Thank you.